Hello everybody and welcome back to part 4 of restoring the Kubota B2100 compact tractor. I've finally now got the time and the space to start work on this and I'm hoping to get quite a lot done in this video. So what we need to do is remove the cab and there are quite a lot of mounting points which are all totally seized so all the bolts are going to have to be cut off which we're going to do in a second. Um, and also there is some hoses and some wires which need to be unplugged as well. So going up into the top of the cab, there's a lot of wiring and hoses here, but it all stays with the cab, so it's nice and simple. So this is the first cab bolt which needs to be cut off. Every single one is totally seized, so yeah, it's going to take a while. So there it goes, basically it is just a bolt which goes up from underneath with like a rubber washer in between. I'm hoping the rubber washers will be reusable. Next one to do is behind here so I'm going to have to remove the number plate holder first. Okay so that is all done, all the bolts are now cut for the cab, I did most of it off screen. But now what we need to do is remove the doors which are on the cab. This is not only to stop them from being smashed but also so they're not in the way for lifting because the cab is going to be lifted off with a gantry crane. Right, so to do this what we need to do is first of all remove the pneumatic strut and um, that's very simple, just a nut and bolt so two spans will do that. Once it's off it then needs to be lifted off the hinges which is slightly trickier but still not too hard. Uh, the worst thing is lifting it off because it's quite heavy. So at the bottom of here there is like an e-clip which comes off and also there is a grease point on top which needs to be removed. So once those two are off it should lift off relatively simply, I'm hoping. So yeah, just remove the grease points or the grease nipples and that just basically gets them out of the way because when you slide the door up off the shaft if they are still there, it could get jammed. And now for the other side, exactly the same thing. Two hinges, two grease points, and obviously the two E-clips as well. So with the door safely off, it will now make it much easier when it comes to lifting up with the crane. In the meantime, what we need to do is remove the internal upholstery and the mats as well, which are very dirty, despite me already giving them a quick rinse, but yeah, they're going to come out and they're going to be cleaned properly. And they should look as good as new by the end of all this, I'm hoping. So first of all, we've got the one which goes around the centre console. There is a bit of a mark inside of it but I'm hoping to either repair it or just you know, get away with it. It shouldn't be too bad. Um, I think someone has in the past, by the look of this below, they have put another ignition barrel in. I'm not too sure, um, but it shouldn't be too bad. So basically, the internal upholstery is just in there with Velcro, and the mats are just slotted into place, but they can be quite tricky to get out because of all the rust. Below the top mat there is the underlay mat which I think just protects everything above and below and under there is the hydrostatic pump.
Right, so all of the underlay mats and the mats are out and you can see that the floor is quite rusty but it luckily is still solid. That's the most important thing. So as you can see I've removed the front plates as well and these actually do help to hold the cab on. Right, so the next job is to remove all of the electricals and the coolant hoses from the cab itself. And it's not too difficult, luckily, despite it being very rusty. So just need to unplug everything and then the cab will be totally free and it'll be able to be lifted off very simply. So just here, this is a ground wire for the washer bottle, the washer bottle motor. And that obviously goes up to the windscreen wiper. So just very quickly remove this. And there we go, all of the wires hanging out. Um, most of the wires have actually broken, the terminals are broken in half, so they're going to have to all be repaired before the cab is reinstalled. Right, so the crane is here. It needs to be assembled. A big job. To, it took a whole afternoon to do this, um, but it's worth it because lifting that cab off by hand will be very difficult. And you can see how many different parts there are for this crane. So, Last job is to remove the coolant and then the hoses which run up to the radiator in the cab, which is for the heating. And this is the hose which, well this is one of the hoses, There's two hoses, the lower one and the upper one. It basically just plums into the circuit to take the coolant heat for the radiator in the heater. Finally, we just need to remove and cut some of the cable ties to make sure that the hose isn't going to get jammed when the cab is being lifted up. And unfortunately, I couldn't record the whole process of removing the cab because it took a while to do, but I've kept in the lowering down of the cab itself with it on the crane. So here it is, it's been lifted up and then it's been stood across on the trolley which is on the crane itself and it's now being very slowly and gently lowered down. So this is the crane it's actually manufactured by Sealy, but I think it's actually sold under different brands as well. The trolley, which is just there, which you can see, is a different brand entirely. And obviously the, uh, the chain hoist, that one is Silverline, but it seems to work very well. Silverline have actually got quite a good reputation, I think. But it's got it down to the ground, which is what I wanted. And it's actually all gone very well so far, hopefully not too well. The last thing I want is for something to go badly wrong, like I discover something seriously wrong with the tractor, but I think it's unlikely at this stage. I have looked at it in some depth. It definitely has to be said, the tractor looks so much smaller without the cab. It's more like a ride on mower again. And yeah, before anything else happens, it's time to tidy up all the spilt coolant and everything, make it all safe. And then we'll be able to move on to work on to uh, these fenders, which are totally rotten. And everything else which is at the back really, we're stripping down the whole of the back assembly. So here is the cab, now on a pallet, and this is just so I can move it around easily. And the hoses are cable tied up, out of the way. It's surprisingly heavy, 
I don't know exactly how much it weighs, but it feels like a lot. I couldn't have done it without the crane. Right, so let's have a close examination of the tractor at the back. Yep, as predicted, that's why I bought the new parts. Everything is totally rotten and all the mounts are obviously broken, so these are all going to have to be replaced. It looks terrible, but I still have very high hopes for this tractor. The next job is to remove the seat, the entire suspension seat assembly. Luckily, it's just four bolts, which are just threaded into a welded nut underneath, so this should be very simple. And that is the seat removed. The next job is to remove the upholstery. And this is just, like I say, Velcroed in. It is a very, very simple job stripping down, uh, which is amazing because I thought that things would be much harder considering all the rust. And there we have it. The upholstery is out. Next job is to remove the seat plate. This also does, uh, well, what it's mounted to underneath the frame is also holding on, or at least it used to be holding on the fenders before the fenders totally rotted to dust. And this really does reveal what is underneath. And first impressions, well, as expected really. I wasn't expecting anything worse or anything better. Um, I think with a good pressure wash, things are gonna be really revealed to a better light. And uh, yeah, I don't think it's gonna be too bad. Just treat all the rust, prime the rust, and then obviously give it a top coat. Next, the floor. Now the floor is the thing I'm most uncertain about because I'm not convinced that it is reusable. It looks reusable, it is solid, but then the mounts, they're not as solid. So I have to say, I hope they'll be able to just get away with welding a few more mounts on. That's the plan. The reason I'm struggling here is because there was some springs to attach from the clutch and the brake paddle. Right, okay, on to the rear fender. Usually I would split these, but as they are all for the scrap, and because all the bolts are totally seized and stripped off, it's easier just to pull it off. We'll get rid of it, <laughs> just get it out of here, and yeah, we'll be able to start fresh with the brand new fenders. So, with the fenders off, that once again reveals a lot more of the tractor. I still need to move, remove the wheels, which I'll do off screen. And yeah, I think that this is actually not as bad as I thought. Although it looks horrendous, it's not as bad as I thought, which is incredible. And this is the floor plate. This is the underside. You can see the springs on here. Yeah, it looks bad. And yeah, I'm still trying to work it out for myself whether or not to keep it. We shall see. So, that is it for this video. This was almost half an hour's worth of content condensed into just 14 and a half minutes. But progress has been made. This has taken three or four days to record. So it does take a while to do. Um, but we're definitely going in the right direction. Until next time, thank you very much for watching and hope to see you again in the next video. Bye for now.